Welcome to The Eastgate and Me, a series of six short documentaries recorded during lockdown and looking at the vital role that the Eastgate Theatre has played in shaping the development and career choices of some of the young people who have passed through its welcoming doors in the 16 years since it opened in 2004. With the Eastgate now open again, well, at least for cake and coffee, you'll hear from eight young actors, some of whom now intend to pursue a career in the performing arts, all of whom have grown as individuals through their involvement with this iconic people's landmark. This week I'm talking to Aaron Houston, an actor with a sense of comic timing that can't be taught, it has to be a part of your psyche. He's also a filmmaker with his own production company, Bad Outtakes. I caught up with him in the fields outside his home in Walkerville. At the start of the pandemic, when we got put in lockdown, oh right, that's great, I can watch so many movies that I've never watched. Whole, <laughs> I'm going to watch all Martin Scorsese's pictures and everything, yeah. which I'm 90% done. Oh right, you got through them. Yeah, I've watched a lot. Um, but then, when you knew it was serious, was I know a lot of people don't agree with his opinions, but it was the day when it was found out Boris Johnson had it. Yeah. I remember watching the news that night when he was put into intensive care, and it was just... This is the first time I've actually watched news properly, and actually looked at politics. So you're not really into politics yeah. then? Yeah, I'm not into it at all, but during the pandemic, yeah, I've, I used to watch it every day. Is that because you wanted to find out or because you've taken a sudden interest in political uh, Very matters? Very massive interest because recently I was watching all of the parliament things yeah. and I'm sorry but it's hilarious like when we're all arguing about oh Boris can you come for a pint with me in that when can we open up cricket again if we're allowed to do other sports when can we open cricket you know yeah. uh, but no I've, I've got really into politics during the pandemic uh, You're, you're uh, the founder and, and major star of Bad Outtakes, which is a, a wonderful YouTube channel with some really quirky stuff on it. So I guess the the pandemic has basically put the skids under that one, has it? Well, what I've, what I've been telling my friends and that, I, I thrive off with being people, like with people I get my, like this is one of the most bounciest conversations I've had for a long time. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah. That's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I lose all my creativity when I'm stuck in my room. So right. bad outtakes is... I've got no ideas. I thought, right, I'll be writing scripts and that. But I'm not with people. And I get my... I just thrive off my enthusiasm with people. So so using something like the Eastgate Theatre then um, is extremely important to somebody with a creative mind like yours that needs other people around it. Aye, definitely, definitely. When, when did you first start going down to the Eastgate then, Aaron? I never started like acting in the Eastgate till Sunshine and Leaf. When was that? That must have been about six years ago, maybe. Maybe right. even a bit longer. Right. I, I remember that was the people I met during that. And I met a wonderful lady, Catherine, and... That's Catherine Madison. I, yeah. And she's <clears> just <throat> helped me with so much with acting. And it's been a gateway to meeting so many great people. And I've met... I got really close to a lot of people during it. So it's is it the great. sort of bonding element of a, of a show that... I, that I, really, and has that helped you as a person as well as helped you as an actor? I would say so with my confidence. Yes, you, you bring a lot of natural energy to your performances, which um, allows you to use very little in terms of the way of script, but a lot in terms of the way of physique. Is that something you use in your bad outtakes? I would say so. I would say so. I think with the bad outtakes films, I know it's not going to work, but half of it, I try and make people laugh, and I'm trying to impress the ladies as well, you know. So <laughs> it doesn't work. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I'd say I use a lot of it with bad outtakes, especially my character stuff when I go out into the public and that, so... So just returning to um, life at the Eastgate, you uh, started at the Eastgate, what, doing drama classes? I did a brilliant workshop with Douglas Roberts. I went to one of his classes and it was just, it was brilliant. I remember we were using, this was, I think, a couple of years ago when the Eastgate got revamped. And we were in the, the dance studio, 
and it's just when the lights came down in that and it was just it was just the environment with the people and it's just the space you've got in that place to act it's just the energy and just when the lights come down I just mm -hmm. yeah so I, I've done acting classes there um, with what really helped with Eastgate was when I was studying for my drama exam uh, we used the Eastgate for a performance space and I felt that helped us as a group of the drama class so much because it just it brought us to a stage and it was local as well and it just it made it feel like when we're acting, with the way for Eastgate is, when you're acting, doesn't matter if there's an audience or not, when the lights go down, you're performing for an audience. So it put us into that light, just... That's a pretty unique facility then, to oh, have yes. in, a, in, a, in a town the size of Peebles, which is what, 7,500 inhabitants, to have a, a fully professional theatre must have been a major influence in the way your career has developed. Aye, definitely, definitely. And it's, it's such a beautiful location as well. Would you be where you are now without the Eastgate? No, I wouldn't be. It's helped me so much, and it's it's helped with confidence so much because I've I've met so many great people. One question on my mind is is what what why do you enjoy the performing arts? I, I just want to make people smile, and that's really that, but that's really difficult. Making somebody laugh uh, is an incredible challenge. I know, but. That's what makes me happy. If, if I make somebody laugh or smile, that makes me happy. So I, I just thrive off the energy. What? If I'm making somebody laugh and smile, I just thrive off that. And I just, I couldn't live without it. So you, you like a live audience then? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean like, I, for me, when it comes to an audience, that's when I just completely, I become a character. And so I just, do, you, do you lose you stop being Aaron and you start being somebody else. You yeah. start being the person you've yeah. been asked to play. Definitely, because I, I, I I'll spend I'll spend in my room for hours trying to get into the character, and I can't. I get put in front of an audience, and I don't I don't know what it is, but I just feel different. Is it a switch inside you that flicks? I would I would say so. It goes from off to on. I I, I would say so because during the pantomimes, when you're playing with audience, like oh he's behind you and that, when you hear the chatter at the start and that. You're getting a bit like jiggly and that, you know, getting a bit excited, butterflies and that. But when you get onto that stage or outside in front of people back at Chiquire, the energy just, as you said, it's an on and off switch, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just, I don't know how to describe it. What's been the greatest challenge you faced during what is now just over three months of lockdown? Not being creative. And I feel I've lost, because as I said, this is... Well, I know we're allowed to meet people now, but when I'm meeting people and having conversations like this, I haven't been this, you know, like, so excited to speak to somebody or... I, I lost I, I lost my enthusiasm. That's the, was the hardest thing for me. So the Eastgate getting back into action uh, would be an important thing on, on your yeah, agenda? Yeah, definitely, because this is the time of the year when we're rehearsing for the pantomime. And the pantomime just, it brings so much life to me during the year and you're working towards it and when you get to V-Skate, you're sitting in the dressing rooms waiting to go up on the stage. I'm just going to miss that this year. I just want my enthusiasm back, you know. I just want to be speaking like this again, you know. And I, I just can't do that at home because I'm not around people because it's like a bouncy ball. I bounce off people's energy and it brings... So you, back. you need places like the Eastgate to allow you to meet the like-minded people and do what you just described. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's a staff, they, they just make it. They, they, they just make it. That's why I keep going back as well. I just, I love going in speaking to the staff. And I think a lot of people like how it's voluntary. Like, not when like the ushers, because they're so welcome on as well when you're speaking to them, taking you to your seat. It's such comfy seats as well, you get cushions, there's a bar so you can't go wrong there. This was an interview that could have run and run. And since it was recorded, the Eastgate has now opened again for cafe business. So it is now able to provide once again the inspiration and the vehicle for people like Aaron to express their obvious creative talents.